laughing, fucking, eating, replicating plate served by mothers, channeling Taurus full moon, and dead moms and live dads, grounded, forward going, get out of jail free, avoid, in ja avoid jail entirely, make it happen magic, in glamour, money, fashion, shine, charm, build it, action, true love always, bring Mandelas, Mumias, Panthers, and Kings, bring Peltiers, and Black Elks, and Lame Deers, bring Maya Angelou, all aglow, and how she says, Bring your ancestors with you into the room, and what will be read is power, charisma. All the angels, all the stars, all the ghosts of Sophie Scholl, the White Rose, von Stauffenberg, Anne Frank, and Marlena, all the nameless, who gave a crust of bread to someone who wasn't going to live anyway. All the retro planets saying, save your energy till late in the game, and then slingshot it through the eye of despots, blow everything sky high at once. Take out killers with their high-powered books and subcultural standards of beauty good looks. And if you're lucky, just keep reloading, picking off evil. Keep them in your sights, crosshairs, the only cross you pray to or bear. Leave behind a trail of stars to X marks the spot, to treasure, to hearts, to explosion of light, to true love coming in your fist. To high as a kite in your arms, to crying over the loss of all humans, all the queers and trans, women and children, beasts in sky and water. Last but not least, all the blue sky from the west down to the east. Blue is how we see it from here. Blow it all up, and it's a dream. Remembered by sentries at castles, we look out at black starry skies and tell stories of what we learned there, then on a green and blue rock, far away and once upon a time. I know, it's so different than everything that I usually do, which is run around with chainsaw with my shirt off and get a blowjob from a dude, and then some guy's like, hey, I blew you in Chicago, remember me? And I'm like, wait, let me see the top of your head. Oh, yeah, totally, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. <laughs> but, and so my babe's like, oh, this poem needs to go first. That's the first poem that I just read. And I was like, really? Ew. It sounds squishy and vulnerable and spiritual. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, it, I, but if you have a babe that you're in love with and she, he, or they says, do the thing, then you got to zip it, think all your thoughts, call your sponsor, whatever, you, somebody, a friend, and then go, okay, babe. That's what I did. So that's why that poem is first. Uh, it's a great poem. Thank you. <laughs> Come on in. Hype, or walk on through. Get yourself a hot beverage. Read a book. Support your local bookstore. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. So some of this is about um, my family and my mom's side. My mom's raised in Nazi Germany. And so a lot of what I got from her is this punk rock situation that you see before you. Typewriter. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. My mother would type when testing a new typewriter. Why do you write that? Because it has almost all the letters, she'd say. Or because she was always in a state of war, having grown up in a holocaust. I grew up believing that sentence was always true. Now is no time to gaze at your navel, your dick, or whatever shit list you make fresh every day. To the exclusion of what is happening around you. Integrate, cry, empathize, but stand the fuck up. Make music, make art, forgive whoever's in the way. Let go of bullshit, acknowledge you're fucked up. Change. Prioritize the real work or you'll have nothing but time to do the meaningless shit you've been putting first. So, you, let's see. We've got to talk about your mom. I'm going to talk about my mom. Here's a story about my mom. 1939, Chemnitz, Germany. I'm just reading them in order right now. Because, see, the thing about a poetry book is that one is you could just, if you're like me, you're ADD, you start in the back, maybe hit the middle, and then give up. Or you might just <laughs> open it to any page, and there's a poem that you need to read, like Bibliomancy, you know. But anyway, this also works. You can do that, or you can just start in the beginning, and there's, like, apparently there's a narrative arc that between my girlfriend and my publisher, Manic D. Press, they figured out it goes in an order. 1939, Chemnitz, Germany. One day, 
my grandfather who had a cannery and a new American car every year whose parents had a deli who promised his wife's parents to take care of her who was a businessman who had a young wife and a daughter who did not have anything else to give said I could sign a government contract for rations for the army make so much money it would be a good business deal but I'd have to join the Nazi party my grandmother yelled three things got heated over my dead body You'll get none of this. Make that money for yourself because I'm taking the child and leaving. Don't even think about it. Are you out of your old adult mind? He was way older than her. Uh, <laughs> which I always think is a good combo because old guys need millennials or somebody to keep them in line sometimes. My mom was pretty sure her parents were about to split up, but they didn't. He did what she said. She set him straight. She never let him sell out. She reminded him of what is right and good and true and what selling out means and who you're selling out to and that the world is so much more than this little family. Their blood runs in my veins. A man who wants to do right, sometimes unclear, finds a rock, and she shows him what's right. The woman who sees truth and throws mandatory pictures of despots out the window and into the street. Consequences be damned. Let our fierceness guide each other. Let us stand up to our beloveds. Let us stand for strangers. Let us be strong when it's not popular. Let us make our grandchildren proud. Let us change the DNA of our descendants. Yeah. Um, so then I wrote a bunch of stuff about dead musicians. Huh? There's a Prince poem, there's a David Bowie poem, there's a Aretha Franklin poem, a George Michael poem. Yeah, George Michael. George Michael, you wanna hear about George Michael? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's also <laughs> on our record that me and Drew, Ariel Sands are in a band together called Commando, Commando. what's up? <laughs> and so the Prince poem and the uh, George Michael poem are put to music. It's all a weird and new reality. Okay, uh, so the other day somebody died and uh, and some dude was like, rip. And I was like, I think you're supposed to spell it out, you know, R-I-P. Okay. Rip, rip George Michael. I kind of like it though. Rip George Michael. <laughs> we knew you were gay with father figure. I mean, what else could you be? Still, for a long time, only rumors. An ex who dated Seal said she saw you make eyes at him across the pool or was it the pool table at his fancy mansion. Still, you had to be caught in a park bathroom with a cop to come out. Still, nothing changes even especially for pop stars, but that was the last sneaky DJ for you. Next, a video in Mirrored Aviators about public sex and shaming us made us all ten of us proud as we watched in a San Diego gay bar. Still, you got free. Now I guess your family will euphemize your death from complications from pneumonia or whatever code they're giving it these days. Your family consists of straight girls who wanked off to you at 13 because they couldn't see your real family was us. Still, the plague makes of us diseased pariahs. Even the rich, famous, successful, handsome, perfect, out ones. Even if we were never sick, we stand for the sick. We stand up to those who want to defend your honor by saying you weren't. And what? We're better than our dead friends because we didn't die of the plague. You would have tossed that bullshit aside. You stood for us, for you. Wear a gold star when you're not Jewish. Say you're positive when you're negative. You'd do it. Although you can't chime in on this thread. I have to believe you would have. See, I do need another hero. I do have faith. Switch a star on your belly. Turn systems of privilege and flags upside down right now. Truth is monumental. But a lie to make a point is fine, as you always were. We're sick. I'm proud of it. Woo! So, as a conspiracy theorist, as a good little punk rock queer, I'm pretty sure that a lot of motherfuckers that died in 2016 and before, who never came out, um, there was a lot of people that died in 2016, like a fucking, whoa, we're out, motherfucker. Um, but I feel like a lot of people's real reasons for dying, whether it's AIDS or an eating disorder or whatever, gets covered up by their families because their families are ashamed of their sexuality and they're fucking 
bullshit that they got from their motherfucking families and they don't want to fucking yeah. stand there and fucking face the music. Want to continue to fuck their children up and continue to hide their children's truth. And fuck that. That's all I got to say about that. Um, <clears throat> so there. Soapbox. I'm getting down on my... I'm on my soap. I'm still up here. Okay. Soapbox. Once, oh, when I read, when I first um, wrote Godspeed, I had this fabulous editor who cut a whole bunch of political rants out. He's like, this is a novel and you can't have political rants in a novel. And I was like, ooh, just wait till I write a fucking poetry book, motherfuckers. But I did what he said. <laughs> He's like, that's for punk rock songs and stuff. Okay, Prince. It was 82. Me and my girl, we did it one time, said I love you, moved in together. That's how you did. Never considered people might think an interracial couple was something. We were in that love bubble. It was Oakland. Black people, white people, no big. 83. We moved to another hood in Oaktown, an apartment building. Still stood out as black and white dykes. Still didn't care. Driving her pickup truck. One day I heard this pornographic falsetto song and I thought, whoa, who's this chick getting so pornographic on the radio? And the DJ said, that was Prince singing, Do Me Baby. And I said, oh shit, I need to pay more attention to this gender fucker. <laughs> We moved to the white neighborhood, still standing out, still not caring, but I think it started to wear on us a little, especially her. Being the only white dyke in a black hood, it was different from being the only black dyke in a white neighborhood. 84, my best friend from high school told me he was positive. I got off the phone and broke down. I sat in the living room that year under the Gone with the Wind spook poster at Thatcher and Reagan with the mushroom cloud in the background, watched Mad Max, Brother from Another Planet, Liquid Sky, The Hunger, Christiana F., and Sid and Nancy, six times each before returning them to the video store. <coughs> Drank a million buds and slip and slid with our pals and our wife beaters and mirrored cop shades before they became wife pleasers, but most definitely were wife beaters beating the hell out of each other over a free bass pipe. Sat in front of Grandma's converted TV console, High lacquer cherry wood cabinet full of records and a turntable. Drank myself silly to Howlin' Wolf and Lightning Hopkins and Gil Scott and Susie Quattro and the B-52s for hours. Listening to Prince's controversy, turning the album over in my hands, analyzing. Did he really mean it? Did he love us that much? Was he really saying this? Am I black or white? Am I straight or gay? People call me rude. I wish we all were nude. I wish there was no black and white. I wish there were no rules. We're all alone. In a world where Christians wanted us dead, but there was Prince, Coke and whiskey, and starfish and coffee, and let's go crazy, and jack you off, and Anne Christian, and Purple Rain, and cult crossover hit. And under the cherry moon, panned by critics, but he could do no wrong. And ruffled shirts, and romance, and femdites on stage, his spitting image, girl versions of him, and narcissist dream of straight acting queers, fucking the mirror, like there might be something going on, just like. Us and our pals, brown and black and white, fags and dykes, passing joints and disco sexy. Even if there was a plague, one big cuddle party. It didn't feel lonesome. It felt right. They're like motherfuckers better make room for us, because if they didn't, we were coming through anyway. Led by the most fearless, least fucks given motherfucker on the planet. With all the moves and a voice that could go from girl to boy in a second. If he wasn't intimidated, neither were we. 89. Me and my records got tossed on the street because it got high and everyone was mad. 2016. I'm ashamed now more than I was that day because when I look to pay homage to the man, I got to go to the internet like some kind of poser because I never bought any Prince records. The night after he leaves us, it's full moon. I put on when doves cry, but they keep stopping in the middle because everyone in the world is playing it because somewhere along the line, we all lost our records. The clouds are all over the moon. She's real big behind that cloud cover, I could tell. I light the candles and say, Come out! You gotta call them home. And the clouds part. And I say, Sorry, Prince. I lost the records. Sorry. It's not that I ever stopped loving you. I just thought you'd always be there. Any other requests? Oh my god. <laughs>
could read the Bowie, Bowie one. We read the Bowie one. one, yeah. Read the Bowie one? Okay, so when... Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> the Bowie thing is brought, just like... I feel like whenever someone dies, all the shit comes out. And especially... I don't know. Well, for this guy, anyway, suddenly people were like, hey, that guy, like, molested a teenager and she was 13, there was a hot tub and all this, and she's like, no, I'm cool, I'm good. I'm good with David Bowie taking my virginity. And we're like, you don't fucking know. You're 13. You can give consent. And so, like, it was this whole discussion. Um, and, and I think it made a lot of us have to think, like, what is consent? Do we... I had a lot of sex before I was 18. Was I just, like you know, taken advantage of, I didn't know what was going on. I decided exactly what I was gonna fucking do. Um, I was lucky, I, nothing untoward, mostly didn't happen until after I was 18, where I wasn't consenting. But, um, but anyway, that was a moment where we were gonna be like, uh, the Homobiles was gonna play Rebel Rebel, and then the femmes in the band got really mad and me and the old punk bass player were like, Rebel, Rebel, this is this, this is queer, it's this, and they were like, no, didn't you read about what happened? And they went charging <laughs> out into the hallway, and we were, we were all, all the rest of us were looking at each other like, uh-oh, I think we're in trouble. So I wrote this. Bowie's grave. Yes, children. Recite your lessons. Speak out. Tear down heroes. Shame everyone. Spit on graves. Die easy, knowing one day you'll bless smashings of your image. Any homage, cycle destruction, run society, remote control zombies, dumbly stumbling. You understand now. Stop the Buddha. Bowie demanded, escape the proscribed. No gold stars for coloring in lines, not clean or upright. Love James Brown and Jerry Lee Lewis. Break everything and sleep in what's left. Silence equals death. Looting equals life. Choose your store wisely. Long loving looks at ugly. Shame is compelling. Iconoclasm is welcome. To be saints, leaders, and heroes. Eschew halos, halos, crowns, and laurels. Dethroned, rock stars, saw you through changes, but never wanted sainthood. Willing to break, sing break it all. Remake it in your image, as it will be remade again, as your grave will be spat on when you're gone. Let loogies water daisies where we fall. Um, oh, so, friend of mine's a close friend of mine just texted me a while ago. I was like, I knew her mom was sick. I was like, are you okay? He's like, my mom died at 3 a.m. And I was like, oh. So, um, if anyone's ever lost a mom, you know you only get one. So it's always standard. So I wanted to write this. I wanted to read this because a lot of this is about losing people and stuff step and grief and sadness and harshness but also just remembering people that's how we keep them alive right here you know and um how many people know who Susie Bright and Honey Lee Cottrell were or are Susie Bright still alive she was Susie's expert and she had a long and fabulous love affair with Honey Lee Cottrell, who was a photographer. And there's a famous picture of them, I think like in the 80s. It was in the Honor Backs magazine that Susie edited. Of uh, them in a bubble bath smoking cigarettes or something together. And um, so if you're queer, extended family means you're friends with all your exes. And that, I feel like, was this, that special relationship where you stayed friends with your ex forever. And so when she died, it was really harsh. Um, but sweet. Parallel parking with heroes in boats. Is that Big Ben? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We call it LA Big Ben. Nice. I see. Do you want any water? No, I'm not. No, do I need it? Am I doing that thing? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, hate that. No, I'm good. I'm good in this moment. Okay, I'm just going to do a couple more and then talk about stuff. Parallel parking with heroes in boats. And then we were wrapped, braided, sleeping like that. 
and my hands searching found you that part and I lay my fingers over you and the fingers of my other hand curled around your forehead and that was heaven and shall remain heaven for all time at work or war or on stage belting out anthems and playing any of seven harps in key you fitting perfect all around me in my arms beyond Polaroids it's surround sound with the rain pouring down. It knows when we've come and gone, like a mother singing us to slumber. And while opening curtains and setting out pinafores and britches, salt pork and porridge. And then we slid this small boat, pushing it through a Lisbon alley to a canal. And there was Susie Bright and Honey Lee Cottrell. If Honey Lee had lived, not smoked Marlboro's in the bath in that famous pose, Honey Lee had propped up her 35 millimeter millimeter knicker mat next to a clawfoot tub of bubbles and caught them laughing like there was no tomorrow but there was tomorrow came and if this was that tomorrow none of the romance had gone not diminished by time or death in that same position honey leaned up against the cool stern of the boat and Susie up against her and we with our eyes full of hope and our mouths full of fresh buck waited for the boatman to say go and we pushed off into the Venetian River, past Arabic tile and Egyptian columns, and closed each other's eyes just to feel our fingertips on our faces because we had all the history in the world and never had to go hungry. All we needed was each other and water and vessels to carry us through.